All right, thank you for staying with us. Uh, it's time to look through the newspaper headlines and I begin with the Nation newspaper. The major story here says federal government unveils plans to strengthen Naira. Staggers release of 5 billion Naira palliative funds to states. Why economy is weak by finance minister says Tinubu will deliver better life to Nigerians. Another writer here says president inherited debt host standing economy. Soludo, that's uh, Governor Soludo speaking there. All right. Emifiele anxiety in CBN as uh, DSS Deputy Governor. Emifiele anxiety in CBN as DSS Crisis Deputy Governor. Another story here says government mandates security agencies to recover 500 billion naira anchor borrowers' loans. Government, government mandates security agencies to recover 500 billion naira anchor borrowers' loans. And this story, NLC to begin two-day warning strike Tuesday. NLC to begin two-day warning strike Tuesday. Now, Abuja communities where girls' breasts are suppressed to save them from rape. Abuja communities where girls' breasts are suppressed to save them from rape. Another story, uh, my battles with Randy lecturers opposed to CCTV cameras on campus. Unizik, vice chancellor, is speaking. Niger sets for rallies to demand exit of French troops. France vows response to any attack on her facilities. Then uh, the story on the top corner, Gabon military hunter faces first dissension as opposition group demands power. Brand school family affair. Who has your story here? Okay, um, I would begin with uh, the headline that says, FG mandates security agencies to recover 500 billion naira anchor borrowers loan. Mm. Now, the president has given relevant security agencies a matching order to recover over 500 billion naira given as loans under the federal government's anchor uh, borrowers program. And the report is also saying that about 1.1 trillion was sunk into the program and only 575 billion has been recovered uh, so far. The report also says that many of the banks are accused of failing to account for the funds which passed uh, through them for disbursements to uh, beneficiaries. They are also looking to uh, recover loans from um, farmers and other individuals who had one or thing, one thing or the other to do uh, with the money. And it should be recalled that uh, in June, the Guardian reported that some beneficiaries didn't get the loan on merit, and so they didn't feel the need to return uh, the money. In mm -hmm. fact, a total of 280 billion naira was alleged to have been uh, received as kickbacks by approving authority. Mm -hmm. So we just hope that uh, this move would yield results. At the end of the day, the hope, of the day and hopefully, bring back money in, because uh, into the if the business is not thriving, and then where do you get the monies to repay? That will be the processes because sometimes they said these monies were released when most of the farmers that were given these monies are not. It wasn't released during the planting season, Absolutely. so they couldn't channel these monies appropriately so they can yield profit and repay. But well, they should have kept the money till when they could use it Where profitably. Would they keep it? <laughs> in the ah. banks, of course. There How are many other, of them there are other investments that you can... This story is long gone. Let's, let's not go there. Anyway, I have a story on my battles with Randy lecturers opposed mm. to CCTV cameras on campus, says the VC of Unizik. His name is Mr. Esiumone. And he says he was interviewed by the nation by representatives of the newspaper, and he had said that. So far, two lecturers have been um, shown the way out of the institution, one in the faculty of law and the other in the faculty of pharmacy, stating that most times, there should have been more, but most times um, we see that students are scared to, to put forward those complaints because mm -hmm. they're, they're always very, very um, worried that you know, they'll be victimized yes. at the end of the day. Yes. And so he also spoke to the student union government stating that um, they should let students know that there's no worry, that they should just um, keep reporting those cases. And in his tenure, CCTV cameras were installed in some security um, strategic positions within the institution. 
but experienced sabotage, some were removed. Of course. And he is still planning to install them back because he feels that it is important to expose the Randy lecturers on the campus. Absolutely. I recall a recent case where a family member's, a family member's daughter talked about how a lecturer was trying to um, victimize her. The story is long, Sha, but she was afraid. That's where I'm going to, to you know, write a statement. We had to put pressure on her. Her mom had to reach out to me to say, tell her to do this thing. In fact, I had to ensure that she sends me what she wrote. I looked through it, made the necessary correction, and send it to the school authorities because it's important that we bring these people to book. I also have my own experience. The Gabon Hunter and the story behind the story. So we've been following the fact that the Gabon has gone through a coup. Mm -hmm. and, but the, the military that took over are saying that they want to install a particular general into mm -hmm. power. Who is a while, family member? Who is a family member? While the um, election that took place, allegedly, the person, the, the contestant against the president was claims that he won the election. He said that, that his name is Albert Ondo Osa. Mm. Yesterday said that the coup that was on Wednesday was just a family affair. It wasn't a coup, it's a palace revolution. Mm. He said it's just inter-family fighting themselves, it's not fighting for the country, and that yeah. the initial jubilation of the Gabor people was premature because they were thinking yeah. that they are truly taking out that family entirely. That mm. is not the family they took out. They just took out one member of the family by another member of the family who sponsored the coup to take place. The election, electoral commissioner said that the election that was won by this, the former, the housed leader, had a 64% vote to this Ondoosa 31% vote, but the ballot counting was done without any independent observer, observer. and there was an internet blackout. Yeah. So yeah. obviously there was a democratic, undemocratic, democratic election. We don't know what happened. And it's also important to say that the family has been in power for over half a century. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the there's minutes. just been, mm. it's from one father like to the other, like this person is across. Yes. Now this one is, they said the sister so, of the person is... So right now, it's a lot for the people of Gabon. But I have this story uh, that interests me, talking about some communities in Abuja where uh, the girls' breasts are suppressed to save them from rape. So it is reported that one young girl, one in every four Nigerian girls, goes through uh, sexual abuse. And so these communities in Abuja decided to find a way around protecting their children, protecting their girls, their daughters. So they decided to resort to, if they see their daughters maturing to that level where they're beginning to see some of their reproductive organs, you know, developing here, and they decided to do breast massage, which is not healthy at all. So they use uh, the broken calabash, they heat it up, and then they use it to massage hey, God, the, the, the hey. girl's breast. And then you, you see the pain that the girl will have to go through as a result of that. It's, all, it's similar to female genital mutilation, just to protect the, the girl child. Sure. Instead of dealing with the men that are Instead of dealing with the root cause, you are protecting the girl, but all of these measures are not really addressing the roots. So it is high time, yes, we have laws, but enforcement has been the challenge over the years. It is high time we begin to look into those laws and their enforcement. Very, very important. It seems we need to go on a break. When we return, we'll continue looking through the newspaper headlines. Stay with us. All right, thank you for staying with us. We are still looking through the newspaper headlines, and this time around, we're going straight to the Punch newspaper. The major story here says federal government dismisses school fear, ex generals warn politicians against poor governance, and the uh, riders. Minister says no plan for military shakeup, Tinubu not at war with Niger. Good leadership, respect for constitutional, for, for constitution critical, ex CDS others are speaking. Another story here says Ogun, local government chairman Ed, by prostrating before Governor Biodun, suspended council boss is saying this. DSS detains CBN deputy governor. Well, the federal government to set up negotiation team on school fees hike. And this uh, sad story uh, that came out yesterday talking about how attempts to save my marriage failed. Uh, the actor Nino Lo speaking there. 
And then uh, top corner here, Labour List 6 grievances begins warning strike Tuesday. Federal government plans a review of tax as tax waivers go up 6 trillion naira annually. Um, and we mentioned some companies that may be affected by this uh, look, by this move by, by the federal government to review tax waivers. Who has what story here? So while we're following the story of um, the council, the local government council boss that was that is now suspended. We yeah. made it our hot topic, I think it was on Thursday. And it seemed like, as we discussed it, that same day, he got suspended. There was a lot of noise. So he's giving an interview to break down why he stands by what he said mm. and the fact that he feels that um, the, the other local government chairmen that went to prostrate before the governor of Ogun State were not doing... The that, right thing. Yes, that it was... It, was, it wasn't right for them to do that. It was an interview. In answering the question concerning um, funding for local government, he said that the standard is there's a federal, local, and state level. He alluded to the fact that the, many people feel like the Abiodun administration hasn't been doing anything bad because staff of local government are getting their salary speed. Mm. But he said that the job of local government isn't just to pay their staff salary. They can't carry out any project. He said, you are, as, a, as a local government chairman, you will see things wrong within your local government and you cannot do anything. Mm. There is no budget to do it. The process of applying to do it is cumbersome, like your hands are mm. tied. tied. He also mentioned the fact that there was intervention, four intervention by the former administration um, of Muhammad Buhari to solve the problems with the local government and none of the money that the president then released got to any local government. Then he broke down how there's a 10% internet generated revenue that should go to all the local governments shared equally, never been shared in Ogun State. So he's mm. standing by his word and he's saying that he's, though um, he, has, um, take, he has relocated himself and his family for safety because right. he alleged that there were Threats. threats to his life. Thugs and, hood and um, police, officer, police um, security agencies came to invade um, his house as well as the local government to prevent him from being able to do anything and he's been suspended. Um, but we're looking forward to justice taking its course and we like all other local governments because there's a, well, there are 774 local governments in Nigeria and if those that are also experiencing the same thing should come together and strengthen democracy. Democracy is government of the people, and the people are the ones that will strengthen it when they see something wrong with the system. Well, it, it's, a, it's a tough one for him as it is because he's standing no, alone. He's as standing said, alone. To help him. So uh, how, who would want to help him Everybody at this for point? Himself. Everybody's for himself and, you know, his own, uh, what they can benefit out of the system as it is. But um, we only wish him well at the end of the day. Who has another story here? Labour list six grievances begins warning strike on Tuesday. We would recall that earlier in the month, the NLC went on a one-day strike and it was called off because the federal government intervened, saying that they would have a discussion with them. But now, the NLC secretariat is saying that they decided to take this decision to go on a two-day warning strike again, following the failure of the Tinubu-led federal government um, to dialogue and engage stakeholders within the organized labor on efforts to cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy on PMS. And so this is the reason why they want to go on, on, on strike. But then again, they have brought other counts saying that they have six reasons. So because they said they've stated six grievances and I would quickly take them. They include the center accused the police of laying siege on the national headquarters of the NURTW. It alleged the exploitation of the rights of workers in Imo State, interference in trade union matters by the Abia State government, proposed demolition by the new minister of the Federal Capital Territory, and two other reasons. And so they say that these two days is just a warning strike because they are actually gunning for a 21 day total shutdown hmm. later in September. <laughs> There, there. <laughs> Mine is they should continue engaging the government if they have that uh, access. Yes, of course, they should engage government because that's the only way you can get results. Anyway, let me just uh, quickly take this story on um, the, the major story here. Federal government dismissing coup fear, ex-generals won politicians against poor governance and all of it. Now, we have seen a wave of coups across West Africa and... Not just West Africa, but Gabon. some African states. Mm -hmm. Gabon is not in West Africa, mm -hmm. so to speak. So um, we saw that um, some countries decided to do a shake-up. Mm -hmm. Paul Bia. <laughs> <laughs> Cleared everybody. Did a shake-up. 
Phil and Paul Kagame also did the same thing. And we know Paul Bia has been in power for 40 long years now. So um, the federal government had to come out to say that, you know, we uh, as a country, Nigeria has passed that level where we're looking to, where there could be a military takeover, that we have embraced uh, democracy mm -hmm. fully. But then there's been this call or admonition to uh, leaders to respect the rule of law ensure good governance, ensure the dividends of democracy. That is what the admonition is uh, coming from ex-CDS, uh, all those who have been part of the military and all of that. They are talking to people saying, ensure there's good governance. Sounds like a subtle threat, threat too. Like, I, I, don't, I like, don't want to take it as a subtle threat, but an admonition. Ensure, that's why you are there. Mm. Ensure you deliver to the people because you campaigned on that. So deliver on what you campaigned on. That's the call. I agree though. I agree that they should Damala, you wanted to take a story. Yes, um, the federal government wants to set up negotiations, uh, it wants to set up a nego negotiation team on tuition fee hike. Mm. So the Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, said this on a Friday at uh, an event titled International Day to Protect, e Protect Education from Attack. And uh, he also said that the hike in school fees could be the major cause of the various attacks happening across schools, and therefore there was a need to find a, a solution. He touched on the safe school declaration. And the safe school policy it is that policy that was made to ensure that children in conflict areas or affected by insecurity continue with their education. So the Minister of um, Education said that Although this was um, ratified in 2019, and the Constitution says that they should provide free education in such situations, however, in a situation where the government cannot provide, they are at liberty to invite PTA and other relevant stakeholders mm. to help in taking up this responsibility. Right. Yeah. So it will be good so to see the outcome absolutely. of uh, that um, Negotiation, negotiation at the end of the day because parents are looking forward to that. Let's quickly move to Saturday sun and we have to run. Uh, the major headline revealed PDP to decide we care others' fate after tribunal's verdict. Frustration, confusion in states as residents wait for palliatives. Emefiele, DSS detained CBN Deputy Governor Ubiora for questioning. Fuel subsidy, NLC to embark on two-day warning strike. Ibada. 116-year-old becomes king as Olubadan crowns 32 new Obas. Igbophobia holding Nigeria down. Muama Igbo leader uh, is speaking. Reasons Nigeria isn't moving forward. Presidency orders security agencies to recover 500 billion naira and borrowers loans before September the 18th. Who has what story? I have the DSS detained CBN Deputy Governor Obiora for questioning. Right. And so the DSS invited... Obiora Kingsley for questioning as against what is circulating around in the media now saying that he was arrested. This article states categorically that he wasn't arrested, but he was invited for questioning. For questioning yes. And he said that um, this invitation may not be unconnected to the ongoing probe of the former suspended CBN governor, Godwin Emefili, who is currently in custody of the, of the service over allegations of financial mismanagement. And so there was a representative which claimed anonymity, and he said that whoever an investigation leads to has to be invited to answer questions as the probe pertains to such person. I cannot give you any more details, but all I can say is that... The way she's even reading this. <laughs> Please continue, I'm enjoying it. But all I can say is that it was invited for questioning over an ongoing investigation. And don't forget mm -hmm. that the suspended former governor appointed Obiora. Mm. That is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Any other story here? None? I want to say quickly, quickly about the story about the NDDC. So, you know, with the, um, the okay. story that the protest going on concerning the appointments that the president made into the, made into the NDDC board. Okay. And okay. now the president, our president, has been, this, uh, this I'm sure has been a very, very responsive administration because things seem to be happening very fast. So they've taken out the representative for um, Undo State as okay. well as the person representing Cross River State. Both, part, both um, nominees have been taken down and replaced... Um, taking effect yesterday, the chief press secretary, not the chief, sorry, 
Special advisor to the president of Media Publicity, Ajuri Ngalali, released the report saying that Mr. Asi Oku Ag Akang um, has been replaced with Honorable Orok Otuk Duke. And I hope this will put the people of Cross River at peace because we, we had that conversation yesterday on the show mm -hmm. with the Cross River um, APC youth leader. I would have loved to take this weekend story, but it's just with the fellows. No, let me just, just no, let me let me leave. You know, he has been saying that the PDP cannot suspend him yeah. because you know, leading up to the election, what yeah. he did for the APC, um, how he was part of those that helped support the president mm. now to emerge, and uh, it was seen as anti-party activity, mm. so to speak. And then um, he has coming and he's been moving around with the president. He got the appointment, Certainly. and then. The, the party is saying, you know, still rambling as a result of that decision. And he's saying that the party cannot suspend him. He, it's his confidence that uh, I, I, I just love. I don't know what he has I on the party. Yes. But, you know, he's just saying that the party cannot suspend him. There's, and that he has not it's decided confidence. to leave the party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's always saying he is committed to the party. And so the party cannot do anything. Okay, he him, but then, to them to ask if he could take the appointment. And they told him they he, told could him take, he could take the appointment. So, so what's now the what, issue? What's, what, what's the issue? Okay, because okay. It, it's, it's even good to see... <laughs> You know, another party getting an appointment. Yes, that yes. is what is we want great. to see. Just as we see in the National Assembly, House of uh, Representatives, for instance, we have a myriad of parties there. That is what makes democracy thrive when we can engage each other, not because of our party affiliation, Absolutely. but because we are looking at the Project Nigeria. Absolutely. And that's what it is for me. So he, he said he consulted his party and they agreed, but now they are saying he can be disciplined. Oh. They are not looking at perhaps taking him out of the... But what the discipline, the disciplinary action will be, we do not know at the end of the day, but we are, I'm waiting to see how this drama oh. would unfold oh. because it involves <laughs> weak. <laughs> All right. It seems that our time is up with regards to the newspaper headlines. We could not continue with uh, other papers this morning, but... Right. Next, we'll discuss a hot topic. Stay with us.